Hi, welcome back to CS560. So this is the last lecture of this semester and we will talk about the topic of MP completeness. Okay, so in this lecture, what we will be discussing is very theoretical content. So the term MP completeness is basically about <clears throat> the difficulty of uh, problems. Um, it is a term that uh, theoretical computer scientists use to basically categorize different problems and different algorithms into different levels of difficulties. So it's basically um, <clears throat> about the idea that we can separate easy versus hard problems. Okay? So before we introduce the theoretical concepts, um, <clears throat> let's first go through some examples that we might be already um, familiar with. Okay, so in the uh, <clears throat> graph, in the advanced graph algorithms, we have uh, know that their uh, algorithms solve the shortest pass problems or shortest simple pass problems in the graph, right? So uh, it's quite easy to get the shortest pass from a single source in a directed graph. So for example, Bellman Ford or Dijkstra's algorithm will give us such a solution. And particularly for Bellman Ford algorithm, it gives us a big O of V times E time solution. And um, this is, um, <coughs> um, generally speaking, this is a quite um, satisfactory solution because given a graph that has V vertices and E edges, it is guaranteed that within V times E time steps, we are able to have the shortest pass from a single source to all the other vertices. Okay, So we can think of it as a pretty easy uh, problem to solve. Okay. So when we compared it to a different problem, say if we want to find the longest pass between two vertices, in this case, this is a quite difficult problem. Okay. So intuitively speaking, um, in order to find the longest simple pass problems, you, you basically want to search over all possible routes, all possible passes between two vertices. Okay which uh, intuitively uh, will cost you much more uh, time searching that space. Okay? And uh, merely determining whether a graph contains a simple path with at least some given number of edges is hard. Okay? Not to mention that to find exactly the longest simple path. Okay? So um, in this um, simple example here, you, you can try it at home, that's to say find the simple, the, the shortest simple path between S to Z, right? It's quite uh, easy that you, at, with some, with a glance or with a few minutes, you can find the shortest path from S to Z, right? But it takes you longer, a bit longer to find the longest pass because in order to find the longest pass there's always more options to consider okay you can always choose the uh, next step that leads to a farther away passes okay so this is the first uh, intuitive comparison we can have uh, that <coughs> uh, tell us about the, ex the the difference between an easy and a hard problems Okay, so the description of the easy versus hard problems can be uh, can be quite similar, right? We just change one word. We change the word shortest to longest, and that makes the nature of the problem totally different. So the next example is the so-called Euler tour versus Hamilton cycle problem. Okay, so the Euler tour of a graph is a cycle that traverses each edge exactly once. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this is uh, something that's covered in um, <clears throat> in high school mathematics, 
So, uh, but it's a it's a quite interesting problem. Say, in this graph, if you want to start from some vertex or from some node and you traverse each edge exactly once, and the question asked if such a a cycle or such a path exists. So, if you uh, start from this vertex and you go to that for once, so you traverse a once and then you go to this point. And this point, and this point, and this point, and this point. So the goal is to traverse all the edges exactly once, and then draw the whole graph. Okay. So whether such a path exists is called the Euler Tour problem. And we can determine such a problem within linear time. Okay. So all we all need, all we need to do is to examine the properties for each edge. Okay. As long as the all the edges satisfy some properties, then we can guarantee that the Euler tour exists. And the other um, uh, problem called Hamilton cycle, it looks similar, but it's quite different in nature. And a Hamilton cycle of a graph is a simple cycle that visits each vertex exactly once. Okay, so the difference is vertex versus edge. So this is a whole different question, right? So for example, in this um, uh, polyhedron, and our goal is to visit each vertex exactly once without visiting it twice. So the, the highlighted uh, path in red color is a, one of the solution, one of the Hamilton cycle. So in determining Hamilton cycle, is a very hard problem. It definitely cannot be solved within linear time. Okay, so um, we're not going into detail, de uh, deep in deep, deep details about how, why this is the easy versus the hard problem and how this is a hard problem. So we just want to show that that's seemingly similar to the two uh, problems that that are seemingly uh, similar. They they might result in very different. Uh, solutions or different uh, difficulty natures. So this is the um, a second example we introduced here, and let's look at a third example, and it's called a conjunctive normal form, or CNF as it's um, a short form. So we have a two CMF satisfactory satisfiability problem versus a three CNF satisfiability problem so this is these are two uh, uh, so the two cnf is kind of a pretty easy problem but three cnf is not a easy one okay so this problem is about solving uh, some formulas uh, that are combinations of boolean variables okay so a boolean formula may contain variables that are whose values are zero or one with binary values okay and we have a uh, boolean connectives or boolean operators like and or and negative not okay so we have these three types of boolean operators okay so we say a boolean uh, formula is satisfiable if there exist some assignments of the zeros and ones to its variables which will make the formula evaluate to one so if such an assignment exists then we say the formula is satisfiable okay and a boolean and then we further define what is a cnf what is a conjunctive normal form okay so a boolean formula is said to be a k conjunctive normal form or a k cnf if it is the end of the or clauses of exactly k variables or their negations. Okay. It's a lengthy definition, but in general, the form is like this. So the Boolean formula like this is a two CNF. So it's a combination of um, with uh, three uh, and uh, is a combination of three clauses with and operator, right? So the most outside uh, outer layer is connected by the AND operators, right? and within each 
uh, clause, it is connected by the OR. Okay? And each um, atom could be the Boolean variable itself or its uh, negation or the not of the variable. Okay? So it's like, um, so because currently in this example, we all have each clause is, has exactly two variables. Okay? We have x1 and not x2, not x1 and x3, and not x2 and not x3. So this is a 2CNF problem. Okay. So, and it has a satisfying assignment. So if we let x1 to be 1, and x2 to be 0, and x3 to be 1, then this Boolean formula is will be will evaluate to 1. And that's why we said it's uh, satisfiable. Okay. So a 2CNF satisfiability problem can be solved within polynomial time. Okay. And that's why we say this is an easy problem. And however, a 3CNF satisfiability simply cannot be solved within polynomial time. So if we inc increase the size of each OR clause to three number to three uh, uh, Boolean variables, okay, say in the first clause we have x1 or not x2 or x3 and the second into not x1 or x2 or x3 even this simple uh, uh, modification makes the problem uh, a very hard one okay and uh, this is the third example uh, uh, to show that the the difference between easy problems versus hard ones and the easy ones uh, can be solved within a determined amount of time, but the hard ones are those that cannot be that easily solved. Okay? So in the next slide, we're going to show a uh, more, uh, much clearer or theoretical definition between the difference. So based on the difficulties of the problems, computer, uh, theoretical computer science um, defines three classes of problems. So the first class is called P, and in this type of class, this class of problems are solvable in polynomial time, okay? And the P is from the P in polynomial. So that means they can be solved within big O of n to the power of some k, okay? And k is some constant, okay? And n is the input size. So as long as some uh, algorithm exists for these problems, uh, and this algorithm algorithm has a running time that is bounded by a polynomial function, and then we say this problem is um, belongs to the class P. It is solvable within polynomial time. And the second type, second class is NP, and these problems are very verifiable in polynomial time okay so verifiable is different from so, uh, solvable right a verify by verifiable we mean that if we are given a candidate solution or given some solution to the problem then we can verify if this solution is correct or not within polynomial time then we say, okay, this is ver verifiable, and this problem belongs to NP, okay? And it, it's quite different. Verifying a solution is much easier than actually solving a problem, right? So this is a different type, which is called NP. And the relationship between P and NP is, is the core, really the core of the discussion, and we don't really have an open answer yet. So. Uh, we will have more discussions about that in the later slides. And the second type, the third type is called NP complete. Okay, so if a problem belongs to NP, okay, if it is verifiable in polynomial time, and it is as hard as any problem in NP, so 
By that we mean if it is the hardest among all the MP problems, then we call this MP complete. And how hard whether it is uh, how hard it is can be formally mathematically defined. Okay? So we can think of it as um, MP complete is is one of those hardest problems in MP in class MP. Okay? So the status of the, the the MP complete is is unknown. Okay, so basically, this principle is quite uh, important to to remember that we have so far found no polynomial time algorithm for any MP complete problem. Okay, so none of the MP complete problems has been solved by a polynomial time algorithm. But nor has anyone been able to prove that no polynomial time algorithm exists for an MP complete problem. Okay, so it's quite a unsolved problem right now. So on the one hand, we cannot solve any one of them within polynomial time, but we cannot prove that no polynomial time solution exists. So that's the current status of the MP, the so-called MP complete problem. Okay, so in terms of the relationship between P, NP, and NP complete, basically we can think of it uh, quite intuitively like this. So the class P uh, refers to the problems that can be solved quickly. And the class NP consists of the problems that can be verified quickly. And we know that it is often more difficult to solve a problem from scratch than to verify it. Right, so it's it's very easy to verify a problem, and also, but but it is quite different to solve it from scratch. Right, so that means if a problem is P, it does not necessarily mean that if a pro if, if a problem is N P, doesn't mean that it is necessarily P. If a problem can be verified within polynomial time, doesn't necessarily lead to the facts that it can be solved, okay? So it, it, it makes sense to uh, infer that the set of P doesn't equal the set of MP, okay? So it is reasonable to believe there are some problems that are MP complete, okay? So the MP complete means that that type of problem is outside P, and then together MP completes NP complete plus P will complete the whole NP set. Okay, so um, within the next uh, few slides, we'll have more beautiful diagram uh, to to showcase the difference, the the relationship between P and P and uh, NP complete. And so far, all the um, problems, all the algorithms that we have covered in this class, uh, are in the class P. Because for most of them we give, uh, for all of them we give the uh, so a solution within polynomial running time, right? So like sorting problems, uh, optimization problems, or graph problems, we all have uh, quite efficient uh, algorithms defined for those class for this problem. So they all belong to the class P. Okay, so. Uh, in terms of the relationship between the three classes, uh, we can say that any problem that is solvable, any problem in P, which means it is solvable within polynomial time, is also in NP. Okay? If a problem is solvable, then that means we can also verify a solution in polynomial time. Okay? So um, we can believe that, okay, P is a subset of NP. Okay, so if NP is a bigger circle, then P is a smaller circle within that big circle. Okay, so any problem that is solvable must be verifiable within polynomial time. But still, it is it is an open question. We don't we don't, people don't actually have a strict proof for that uh, uh, proposition yet. Okay, so. Another related proposition is that if any NP-complete problem can be solved 
in polynomial time, then every single problem in NP has a polynomial algorithm. So this is a quite ambitious proposition. So, but but people still don't have actually completed, uh, don't actually proved it yet. Okay, so uh, most theoretical because the fact that people cannot find a uh, polynomial time solution for any NP complete problem. Most scientists believe that NP complete problems they are actually intractable. Okay. People just don't have, don't prove it right now. Haven't proved it right now. Okay. So it's still open, although we haven't discovered any uh, polynomial time solution to any NP complete problem, but still we haven't um, people haven't ruled out completely ruled out the possibility that uh, NP complete problems they are are solvable within polynomial time so the reason why we such have an uh, have such a uh, classification as p versus uh, NP and then NP complete is that if we can uh, find somehow find that a problem is NP complete, then we have a good reason to believe that it is uh, not tractable or intractable. So we can uh, avoid wasting time or energy to implementing some very efficient to try to find some uh, um, very uh, efficient algorithms for that problem, which is intractable. Uh, so instead, we can um, try to develop some approximation algorithm to solve a special case of it, or to approximate the problem. But instead of to instead of solving the problem exactly, um, so that's basically a one of the motivation of why uh, we classify problems into these uh, classes. So next. Uh, uh, let's talk about the our the, the current guesses about the relationship between these uh, classes of problems. So it is unknown whether P equals MP. So that means whether um, any MP problems is also a P problem. But most scientists believe that they are not the same class. Okay. So people believe that P should um, uh, doesn't equal MP. P is not equal to MP. Okay, so there should be, there could be, there should be some parts, some space for the NP problem, for the NP completeness, for the NP complete problems. Okay, and in the in the diagram here we have some a new term, the the NP hard problems, which is outside, uh, the outside the region of NP. So you can uh, generally think of it as an even harder problems than the NP complete problems. Okay. So most people believe that MP is not equal to MP is more likely, okay? And in this graph, the following graphs, um, if we refer, if we use co-MP to refer to the class of problems, uh, there is uh, a polynomial time algorithm that can verify no solution, or there's a polynomial time to find a to verify a counterexample, then typically people believe that the A is the most unlikely case. So it is most unlikely that P equal to NP and equal to co NP. But in most cases, people believe that the D, where um, there's some intersection between NP and co NP, right? And within that intersection, there's an even smaller part, which is P, okay? So people believe that this is the most likely case. And in terms of the, as a brief summary, so without using the previous complex, uh, very complex uh, diagrams, we basically, the take home message is that um, if we have NP within this gray region, uh, to represent all the problems that are verifiable within polynomial time, which we call NP, and there is a small subset of it is P, and these P classes, the the P problems, they are solvable within polynomial time, and there is also an NP complete uh, subset, which is not 
solvable uh, by within polynomial time, but people don't have exact proof that NP-complete cannot be solved by uh, polynomial time. People just uh, we just fail to find uh, a polynomial time solution. So uh, typically, we can use this uh, uh, figure to memorize the relationship between P, NP, and NP-completeness. Okay. So that is still a it is still a guess, but most people believe that this guess is quite reasonable. Now let's look at some typical and uh, and complete problems. So the first one is traveling salesman problem, and the problem says a salesman must visit n cities. So we can model this problem with a a graph uh, of n vertices. So it's a complete graph because all vertices, uh, or uh, each of the two vertices, uh, has connections, okay. and uh, each uh, every pair of the distinct vertices is connected by a unique edge. So that's called a complete graph. So the salesman wishes to make a tour or a Hamilton cycle, which means that he wants to visit each vertice, vertex, or each city exactly once. He doesn't want to. Uh, he want. He wants to avoid traveling to the same place uh, more than twice. Okay, and finishing at the city where he starts. Okay, so and, and uh, we also assume that the cost to travel from city I to city J is the um, uh, the number C I J, which is the edge, the weight of the edge, and he wishes to minimum minimize the total cost of the tour. Okay, so for example, in this simple uh, version of the problem, if we have four cities and the connection between the cities, uh, the the cost of traveling from the cities are indicated by the weights of the edges. Okay, so uh, we say that this is a NP complete problem because it's um, we don't have a we don't have a uh, polynomial time solution for this problem, but it belongs to NP. Okay, so now NP means that given a solution we can verify it we can verify whether that solution is a correct one within polynomial time so as as long as that is satisfiable then we say this problem is within np but to prove this is np complete it's a different thing okay so here in this slide we, we will not prove that this problem is an np complete but we will show that We'll show that this is an NP problem, which means that we can verify it within polynomial time. Okay. As for the proof of for the methods of how to prove whether a problem is NP complete, we'll put it into a later slide. Okay. So given a solution, and the solution is for for the traveling salesman problem is a sequence of n vertices indicating the sequence of the cities or of the tour. And a simply a verification algorithm algorithms will simply simply check whether this sequence contains each vertex exactly once, and then sum up the edge the total cost of all the edges and check whether that sum is um, is smaller lower than some some threshold. Okay, so this this uh, verification can be simply done within polynomial time. So we can show that. The traveling salesman problem is NP, and the second problem is uh, a second typical NP complete problem is subset sum or subset summation problem. Okay, so interestingly, this is a quite uh, intuitively it's a quite simple question, a simple problem, but uh, uh, in fact it's an NP complete. So given a finite set. S of positive integer numbers and an integer, integer target number. Okay, we ask whether there exists a subset within S whose elements sum to t. Okay, so it's a very simple problem because we are asking for whether the the existence of a subset. But turns out that this is a com anti complete problem. So for example, we have a set that in uh, includes all these numbers here. And our target is this big number. So one of the subsets 
is a solution. Okay, so it's we can show that it's it's quite easy to verify whether a solution is correct or not. Okay, so let S prime be the solution, and uh, simply a verification algorithm will check, will sum up all the elements in that candidate solution, and will directly know whether this is correct or not. But in order to solve it, this is a quite a difficult one, because we basically need to go over a lot of possible combinations of the of the set, right? So which means that it's very unlikely to have a polynomial time uh, solution. And the second type, the, the third type of problem, the third problem, example problem, is called a clique problem. Okay, so it's this is again a, a graph algorithm problem. So a clique is an undirected graph. Okay, and the clique of an undirected graph is a subset of the vertices. So the V prime is a subset of the V. And then each pair of the clique is connected by an edge. Okay, so that means, in other words, a clique is a complete subgraph of G. Okay. And the size of a clique is the number of vertices it contains. Okay? So the clique problem is to find a clique of the maximum size in a graph. Okay? So a clique is a subgraph, and each pair of the noted of the vertices in a clique are connected. Okay? And we want to find a max a clique with a maximum uh, size. So for example, uh, in the graph here, the the vertices connected by the uh, highlighted by the dark blue, they are one of the clicks, okay? Because only within this dark blue region, each pair of vertices they are connected to each other, but not in the light blue ones, okay? So basically. Given a solution, we can check, we can just go over all possible, we can just check whether it is a clique in polynomial time by checking whether each edge belongs to the E. Okay, but uh, it's, um, it's very difficult to, to, to find all the possible clicks and to find the ones that has the maximum size. Okay, that's the third example and the last example is called the vector cover problem okay so a vector cover of an undirected graph uh, is a subset of vertices okay such that if an edge exists then the two endings of the edge is within that uh, vector cover Okay, so the size of the vector cover is a number of vertices in it, and we the goal is to find a vertex cover that has the minimal size. Okay, so it's kind of a opposite of the click problem. Okay, for example, the red, uh, the red vertices is a vector cover because all the for all the edges within the graph, either one of the Mm, vertices is within the subset so that means we if we take these two vertices in red we covers all the edges okay if we take these vertices in the red we covers all the edges in the graph okay so um, it's basically related to the um, to the click problem so the solutions of a click can be somehow converted to the solution of the vector cover problem. And that's some examples of the um, anti-complete problems. And a lot of them are related to the graph uh, algorithms. As we can see, so we basically want to show that in anti-complete problems, it's easy to verify. Because it it belongs to the it belongs to the category of NP 
but it's it's very difficult to find the find the, to solve it to find the solutions. So next, let's briefly talk about how to prove the NP completeness of a a problem. Okay, so we uh, can use the technique called polynomial time reduction. It's basically provides a formal means for showing that one problem is at least as hard as another or within the polynomial time factor. So we can use the equation L1 is less than or equal to uh, L2, showing that L1 is polynomially time reducible to another problem L2. Okay, So it means that L1 is not, not more than a polynomial time factor harder than L2. So as long as we can show that the NP completeness of L2, and then we prove that L1 is reducible, polynomial time reducible to L2, then the, the NP completeness of L1 naturally follows. Okay. So in practice, um, here we can reduce the traveling salesman problem to a Hamilton cycle, and then reduce it to the vertex cover and to a click and to a three CNF satisfac satisfiability and then to a circuit finally to a circuit satisfiability problem. So eventually we can um, by reducing a certain type of problem to a another type of problem that we already proved the NP completeness we can show we can uh, complete we can prove the NP completeness uh, for that problem. Okay. So basically, the practice is that we just need to complete uh, the problem of the empty completeness of the circuit satisfiability uh, problem in order to complete in, in order to prove the other empty completeness of other problems. Okay, we don't need to know about the details about how to complete how to completely prove the the empty completeness, but uh, this is the typical technique that we use. Okay, so. Um, finally, let's uh, summarize a bit why we uh, knowing about we need to know about the com anti completeness problems. Um, so many problems that on the surface seem very easy or no harder than typical sorting, graph searching, or network problems, they are in fact anti complete. So if we are able to identify those problems, okay, then we know how hard it is rather than show how easy it is we are able to prevent spending too much time solving it okay and um basically this chapter this in this lecture we are not trying to prove the existence of efficient algorithms but instead we, we want to show that for some problems no efficient algorithms are likely to exist so uh so in in, in engineering uh practical scenarios, if we encounter such a problem, such an NP complete problems, we can simply um, try to bypass the original problem, but instead we can uh, um, implement some approximate approximated ways or some uh, ways to approximate the um, simpler versions of the original problems so that's no waste of time or waste of uh, energy waste of um, um, computational time computational resources in solving a, a intractable problems and that is the basic idea of uh, why it is important to know about the empty completeness of problems okay so that's pretty much all of it for this for this lecture for the final chapter and in the next few slides, uh, we will uh, have a brief review of the uh, contents covered in the previous few lectures, and uh, which will be the basis for the final exams. The table on this slide summarizes the purpose, time complexity, and implementation details, and the results of uh, breast first search BFS and depth first search DFS. Okay, so these two are the core contents of the elementary graph algorithms we covered in this class, in this course. And this table on the next slide summarizes the topological sort algorithm and the algorithm for computing the 
strongly connected components, SCC. So these are on top of the uh, DFS algorithm on the previous one. As for the advanced graph algorithms, uh, we the this table summarizes the first part, which is about um, getting the minimum computing the minimum spanning tree problem. Okay, so we have two uh, detailed algorithms, Grasco and the Prince, for uh, computing the minimum spanning tree with uh, similar strategies but different uh, with similar uh, base. Um, uh, base methods and the but different strategies and different data structure to use. And lastly, we have um, gra um, algorithms for finding the shortest pass with single source. So basically, Bellman Ford, uh, the DAC shortest pass, and the Dijkstra's algorithms are covered. They have um, Especially for dihedra, it has the best uh, uh, time efficiency, but it has different constraints on the input graph type. So hopefully, these two uh, these few slides will help you um, get prepared for the final exam. And these are these, uh, frankly speaking, these tables summarize the, the the key parts and the majority parts of the lectures lecture contents. And I will make another video about more details about uh, regarding the regarding the final exams.